Hello, uh, Cliff, please introduce yourself. Yes, good morning, Asandro. Uh, I'm Cliff Beek. I am the uh, CEO and president of Cloud Constellation. Uh, we are a cybersecurity data protection company, and we're using our satellite assets to protect highly sensitive data as it traverses the world. And I'm delighted to be here and talk to you about what new space is and where we're going. Great. So how would you define new space? You know, it, it's a good question. And I define new space as probably where we were as new space 1.0 was about five or six years ago when Google purchased uh, Skybox. And it was sort of the beginning, uh, I think, the foundation of this uh, Silicon Valley interest in um, space. You know, it, it kicked off uh, some pretty interesting technologies. And it may have signaled in that event the, the beginning of something new and different. You know, the, what they were looking at was putting together some capability that would allow satellite imagery to, you know, have some kind of historical value uh, and, and look at the Earth. But really, I think new space is the ability to bring down the barriers for accessing space. It's rejuvenated, I think, and started a whole new generation of commercial activity. And, and you look at this really with the beginning of what, what the barriers to, to space are, and it's usually you know, access. And that would be from what has developed with companies like SpaceX, their ability to reuse rockets, virgin orbit, the idea of having some flexibility in terms of launch schedules. And also pretty interesting companies like um, Relativity that is looking to do 3D printing on off-planet surfaces. So this whole idea of new space has been this accessibility for, for smaller companies, newer technologies, and innovation to enable new, newer kinds of applications into space. And uh, that's pretty much how I would, would look at it in terms of uh, what new space is. It's, it, it's really a movement um, that is technologically an advancement that has enabled smaller companies, innovative companies, to compete alongside of some of the larger, more traditional, what I would consider, you know, government contracting kinds of, of enterprises. Let's speak about cloud computing. That's cloud computing over above the clouds. Um, so why cloud computing in space? Well, for us in the beginning, our first, the first mission is to protect data, to get data off the ground, physically separated and detached uh, from the vulnerabilities of cyber, you know, hacking and all the kinds of issues that occur when you're moving data globally. And really what that is, from a terrestrial perspective, you have a massive amount of interconnecting points and peering points for inter internet exchanges, and that's where these vulnerabilities occur with regard to data being hijacked and, and going into the hands of some bad actors. So our original thought was to be able to bypass that create a physically separated network that would allow enterprises, whether they're financial institutions or government agencies that want to move data around the world, but not be subject to, again, some of the vulnerabilities of the terrestrial network. So getting it up off the ground was the first priority for us. Cloud computing in terms of machine learning and providing some edge computing in space is the next part of our mission. It's not only to protect the data as it was moving around the world, but as the space economy begins to evolve, there is this desire to be able to make faster decisions, to provide some kind of in-space compute, to provide services to those companies that are doing things, not just analyzing you know, Earth observation, but actually analyzing in-space or intraspace, deep space communications. And so cloud computing and putting that in space helps to create some kind of faster analysis for uh, artificial intelligence, for machine learning, and to get it off the ground and to provide that capability into space. Now, you know, we've seen a lot of this sort of evolve around agencies like, like NASA. Um, basically, what we're looking to do is provide applications that have been developed on the ground and upload them and have access to those kinds of applications uh, for the new emerging space economy. 
what unique applications are enabled by um, cloud computing in space? Yeah, well, first, it's not so unique because most of the applications have been designed and put together for, on the ground. I mean, these are essentially, if you look at what IBM is doing, for example, with, with Watson or data analytics, it's been developed on the ground. It's just a question now is, can we upload that? Can we put it into a compute capability in space so that it can be utilized? Um, and again, it's, it's a question of uh, time uh, uh, and resilience for the uh, output to be able to be utilized in space for quick decision making or for the analytics of what's happening in space. And a lot of that information, rather than bringing it back down to earth to make those decisions or to create those analytics, they're trying to be able to get access to that in space. I think it's kind of along the lines when you look at enterprises that are looking to provide 3D printing of rocket engines on lunar services. You know, it's just saves time. It's kind of the next port, if you will, in space to be able to have that uh, capability and functionality. So what Cloud Constellation is gearing up for, for our next iteration of services, is we see this as being able to provide deep space communications, to provide some infrastructure and a platform for those kinds of activities to have some degree of uniform communications, as well as have access to the applications that have been developed on the ground, but provide them to those operations in space. What makes unique your Leo platform compared to other operators? Well, that's a, a great question. I'm glad you asked that, Alessandro. What, what Cloud Constellation has done, it, it's very innovative. You know, in the satellite communication world, as in others, whenever you're looking to bring traffic into an international country or land traffic in parts of the world, you need to have an operating license. So you need to be able to file for licenses, find a local partner. It's not easy. It's not a trivial matter. It takes a lot of effort to do that. So what Cloud Constellation did is in LEO, we're going to be flying at the equatorial plane in a circular orbit at 600 kilometers above the earth. And what's different is that our reflectors are facing up, not down. And you may ask, well, why are you facing them up? We've done that strategically because our goal is to utilize the existing geostationary operators and all of their up and down links to the countries. So we're essentially a customer of the geo operators and we're using their links to be able to provide the landing rights into all these countries. And it's very unique and different. Uh, we have an international patent that was issued for that. And it makes our system um, a little more flexible in terms of cost. We do not have to go through all the regulatory regimes to file for all these licenses. So it really differentiates what we're doing. So um, as you rightly said, uh, cybersecurity is an emerging issue in space systems. Can you maybe um, comment a bit more on that? And uh, uh, what kind of services does your company offer to increase uh, security for space assets? Yeah, for, again, going back to our original concept, it was really to use space as a way to get information off of the terrestrial networks. So our, our mission is to provide a global transport for highly sensitive data that just cannot end up in the wrong hands of bad actors. So for us was utilizing our capability and technology and platforms to move data from one country to another without it having it ending up in, again, subject to a hijacking or having its routing, you know, ANS table spoofed and it ends up someplace else. So for the um, target market that we're looking at, we look at, uh, for example, the ministries of foreign affairs where they have multiple embassies throughout the world and they just need to have this, you know, sovereign communications network. We're also looking you know, for financial institutions that are transmitting highly sensitive transactional data from maybe New York to Hong Kong or Hong Kong to Sydney and not have it subject again to these international peering points. But what becomes more important as you're pointing out in terms of what your question is, is cybersecurity in terms of taking over an asset in space, hacking into perhaps some of the operational systems. And you know, what is to prevent a bad actor from coming in and folding up the solar panels and deorbiting a satellite once it's up? We're not really, our business model is not really involved in that. We're really looking to protect data. But I do see the importance and the significance 
of how we protect the communication networks that affect, you know, very strategic assets. So one of our partners who we're working with is um, Talus Security. They're a former uh, Jamalto. They provide um, highly, you know, um, capable access management and uh, security encryption, security for data at rest and data in motion. So we're working with them to figure out, you know, how can we protect our satellites from having unauthorized access to any of the functionality. I think it's an emerging industry. It definitely is an emerging industry. And there are participants who've been very involved in our ground infrastructure communication networks who are now looking to get into this. And I look at companies such as Talis Jamalto as being one of the leaders in being able to manage that as, you know, they, they probably are the largest manufacturer of SIM cards and have security systems in place already. So we are working with them to bring them into our space. And we see this as being a very important part of the um, uh, industry is making sure that security, cybersecurity, control of those assets aren't a second thought. It's actually primary. And as you start to deploy these highly, you know, strategic assets in space. This has been very interesting. Uh, thank you so much, Cliff, for taking the time to speak to me today. It's my pleasure, Alessandro. I, I enjoyed it and I uh, hope you have a wonderful day and stay safe. Same to you. Goodbye. Bye now.